we can spend millions and millions of dollars and rename in the city or put a piece of artwork in there, but God help us if we cared about the community of which keeps this city going. Small businesses as being one, we've lost thousands and thousands of small businesses. I'm not going to be one. I have had people behind the scenes come up to me to tell me stuff. Um, on a personal level. I kind of was blown away. I've never really thought about what, what has happened here. And, and these are people within departments. And I hope Vengeance by the City isn't the next piece of this one. Unfortunately, somebody started a feed on Reddit, which will be given to the police, by the way, because they've disclosed a private campsite of ours for our family and put my family in danger. Uh, they've also disclosed the location where my grandson goes to school and he's only eight years old. City Vizard for Rebel News coming to you from outside Angel's Cafe, a local restaurant who has now filed a lawsuit against the city over their handling of the feeder main that broke in June 5th this year. It's been over six weeks and the city has not only failed to repair the feeder main to 100% operations or establish a timeline for returning to regular, They've also implemented mandatory water restrictions on residents and businesses to this day, which have no end in sight. Businesses who have and continue to suffer the costs of repairs and seemingly permanent water restrictions continue to demand accountability from Mayor Gondek. In the case of Angel's Cafe, they have now started a lawsuit against the city for their negligence in handling the situation. In a statement of claim posted online by the law firm Napoli Skolnik Canada, listing NMAX and the city of Calgary as defendants, in today's report, we speak to the owner of Angel's Cafe, Kathy Jacobs, to hear her side of the story that Mayor Gondek and the city of Calgary have ignored. We're here at Angel's Cafe with the owner, Kathy Jacobs, who is experiencing the, the, the front uh, of the damage that's been caused by this feeder main burst. Uh, and obviously you've launched a lawsuit now. Uh, could you uh, start by just detailing us what, what was the damage that was done by this feeder main burst for you? Well, mostly the damage was the closures, uh, three weeks. Um, so the first night it happened on the 5th and the 6th, we didn't have water. But it was the weekends the city shut the business. Not, I'm not going to say shut the business down. They shut the ability for me to operate. Um, they did provide me with water in outhouses. However, the pathways, the roadways, the parking lot, always to get to me were closed unless you traveled south side of the river. So, yeah, it made my, my world very difficult to navigate. The following is detailed. Lower grade materials and pre-stressing wires with defects were used in the original installation, resulting in insufficient corrosion protection and variability in material properties. They say at least 600 catastrophic premature failures in this kind of pipe have been well documented since the 70s when this feeder main was installed. They highlight that unclear and contradictory messaging by the city following the feeder main break was also a factor in lost business atop the feeder main rupture and repair needs. They say consequently not only did Angel's Cafe have their water shut off multiple times across their business, access to their business was cut off as well, and physical damage was caused to the operation by a water rupture while the feeder main was being repressurized. This lawsuit states that it is the city's responsibility for the installation, maintenance, and repair of this public municipal utility. They say the city breached its duty to keep the Bears Paw water main in a reasonable state of repair by allowing Bears Paw water main to fall into a state of disrepair prior to the rupture, and that the city is liable for any damage caused by the city's failure to keep the Bears Paw water main in a reasonable state of repair. They go on to say as a result of the city's breaches and subsequent water restrictions, all residents of Calgary suffered damage in some form, and businesses in Calgary suffered additional damage associated with direct economic loss. And that the plaintiff, Angel's Cafe, suffered damages beyond damage suffered in common with all other persons affected by the state of disrepair and resulting rupture. This includes physical damage to their property, complete shutdown of business, complete shutoff of all water supply, physical barriers blocking access to the business, and direct economic loss. They even say the city had knowledge that the Bears Paw water main contained the defects and was prone to catastrophic premature failure, and that the city knew or ought to have known about the Bears Paw water main state of disrepair before the rupture and was required to take reasonable steps 
to prevent a catastrophic premature failure from arising. They say this is not only city negligence, but also a breach of contractual obligations by the city and its NMAX provider for multiple reasons. And finally, when it comes to damages, they seek general damages in the amount of $10 million, amongst other things listed as a remedial solution. You can read that lawsuit in full for yourself by going to firegondek.com and reading the article attached to this report. Likewise, while you're there, sign the petition calling for Mayor Jody Gondek's resignation so Calgary can find a mayor capable of managing a city instead of turning it into a third world disaster at firegondek.com. Why was this an important step for you to take? I just want accountability. I, I guess I'm really getting tired of we the people be, having to be accountable and, and those that are supposedly above us to not have accountability. I want the truth. I want to I want an apology on behalf of the the residents and the people of Calgary from the city of Calgary for mismanagement of this whole thing. I think we're going to find that there's some negligence and you know what? I've been doing this 26 years. I am not very happy with what I'm seeing. Specifically, I understand that it's not just uh, the financial costs uh, of being shut down or having the roadways, uh, the pathways closed around you, uh, but as well when they turned back on the water. Uh, you actually had uh, a physical damage that took place in your facility. Yeah, and I, we had a number of things happen. I don't know how they're all connected, but um, a toilet and a water line and my, my hot water tank, a 40-gallon hot water tank. The hot water tank was identified by, by Waterworks that it was a possibility, but nobody gave us a heads up as to what to do about it or how to manage it or you know, that that was going to be the result. After 26 years, I guess I'm, I'm tired of fighting, but here I am again in the midst of one. Um, too many people I'm talking to are really severely injured by this thing on a financial, in a financial way. I've taken a lot of financial burdens over the last 26 years with this business, um, including a million dollar debt going into COVID. So, so I can get through this one. I'm not worried about that one. Um, and the renumeration wasn't really the reason. I just want the truth. I, I take it from everything you've heard from the city, you don't feel like they've been providing that. Uh, and I understand that in the lawsuit, there's allegations that the city should have known about this or they should have done something about this beforehand. Uh, why is it, do you think, that they didn't? That is the question that needs to be answered, to be really honest. I have had people behind the scenes come up to me to tell me stuff um, on a personal level, um, which... Um, I kind of was blown away. I've never really thought about what what has happened here. And and these are people within departments and and I'm not going to disclose them and I'm sure the courts will do that on their behalf. And you mentioned for, for years you've been fighting almost an uphill battle to keep this establishment going. Uh, how much of that has been a fight with the city? Well, I think right from the beginning, 1998, when I started as a food truck and uh, you know, there's been speculation online that I never ever paid to be here. And that's a bald faced lie. I've always paid to be here. But there's been a lot of information um, through social media as I'm seeing that are details that only really somebody in the city would know that have been given the public. And again, that's only speculation on my part, but it's information nobody else would normally have. So something's being leaked out into there about my contracts with the city. But honestly, the biggest move and the biggest change was this new structure. And, and that was based on all kinds of stuff from the past. But um, this business took 26 years of 14 and 16 hour days hard work by a family, not just by, me, by myself and a lot of young people that have come forth and worked with me over the years. Uh, we've all paid the price and we've all gained a little bit but I've not been in the market of making a lot of money in this business, just taking care of the community, which is really what I'm all about. And if I could touch on that further, uh, you mentioned just before we came on that there are people on Reddit uh, who are posting uh, information that they shouldn't be personal information, as you mentioned about you and your business. What exactly is happening online here? I'm not really sure because I don't do much online. My kids do. And unfortunately, somebody started a feed on Reddit, which will be given to the police, by the way because they've disclosed a private campsite of ours for our family and put my family in danger. Uh, they've also disclosed the location of where my grandson goes to school and he's only eight years old and this isn't okay. So I don't think people realize um, 
most of the posts that are on there are bald faced lies. And I can take it. I come from a generation of sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. I don't care about the name calling. I don't care about what you think about me, my political views. Um, I've always lived in my highest integrity and, um, and I expect to hold other people in that too. And I think some of these people are gonna need to be held accountable for what they've done because my children are very nervous about this. They don't, I don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. So yeah, not good. And the city also, previously they mentioned, I, I pushed this to them, you know, are they going to be providing any financial compensation for the businesses that have suffered? Uh, and does the city have an estimate of the current financial losses businesses in Calgary uh, have suffered in relation to both the water main break and repairs, as well as the mandated and requested water use limitations? Uh, is this being measured for future analysis? So I can say that we're working with the business and local economy team and that they are meeting regularly with business. Uh, as for numbers, right now we do not have those numbers, but they are working closely with that group and making sure that we understand the impacts that they're receiving as well. They came back with a hard face no. At this time, the city is not considering any financial compensation. What's your reaction to that statement? Well, that sounds about right for the city. We can spend millions and millions of dollars and rename in the city or put a piece of artwork in there, but God help us if we cared about the community of which keeps this city going. Small businesses as being one, we've lost thousands and thousands of small businesses. I'm not going to be one. And I notice, uh, I see there's, you know, the one porta potty behind me. There's two porta potties mm -hmm. right underneath your Angels Cafe. Uh, it would have been a couple weeks ago where there was almost a dozen porta potties set up over here. What kind of effect does this have? I mean, I mean, you've, you've literally got fecal matter aerating in hot weather outside your restaurant. Yes, I've put in bylaw. Um, I've called or not called 311 and asked them to remove it. It stinks to the high heavens. Nobody's bothered. I did get a, an online response that it has been submitted to somewhere and still with this heat, we're just sucking in the fumes. It's quite, quite annoying. And I understand it, on my behalf, they put the water, those there, but I would have appreciated them removed at the same time. So, and I gotta say on behalf of the city, they did provide me water while the road was closed down the pathway was closed down and the water was turned off but that didn't work too well either, so yeah. Well, and uh, so if you had a final message for Calgarians specifically, what would that be on this front? I've got a staff of 20 kids I take care of here. And if I'm not open, that's 20 more unemployed people. And we provide a damn good service here. We care about our community. And if that wasn't clear during COVID when we gave away over 8,000 meals for free to the public, then I don't know what else further to say. And uh, lastly, uh, as, a, well, as a message for the city uh, specifically, uh, obviously I've just been inside your restaurant. It's a very beautiful setup uh, and I'm sure you worked very hard to maintain it. Uh, and now they're, you're faced with these consequences. What's your message to the city? Start living in integrity, come clean. You know, an apology if you've done something wrong, that's what we, we would expect to do. It's what I teach my children, living in integrity. Be honest, like you're there as a face of the people of Calgary. We need you to do your job, just as I have to do my job, you know? And I just want accountability. I want them to tell us the truth. Uh, last word goes to you. I hope vengeance by the city isn't the next piece of this one. Because if you didn't like me before, I know you're gonna like me less now, but I'm not here for the city, I'm here for the whole city. I'm here for the people. And I would hope that that's the job of the city as well. I reached out to the lawyers involved and NMAX, which is contracted by the city to provide billing and customer care for municipal services such as water services, but have yet to hear a response. We also reached out to the city of Calgary and received the following, quote, while the city is aware of this lawsuit, we have not been served with a statement of claim in relation to this matter yet, and we are therefore not in a position to provide comment. However, I would take this with a grain of salt Considering previously when I followed up with the city's communications team, they provided me with misleading information. While the city's water supply was being exclusively provided by the Glenmore Water Treatment Plant, I inquired into any changes that were made to the remaining tap water supply and treatment processes, and they responded informing me nothing had changed. Only after I got a 311 agent to admit that they were dumping chlorine into the remaining water supply did the city backtrack and admit to this themselves. 
if you think enough is enough and the mayor should be held accountable for her negligence in this situation and letting a situation divulge into an absolute disaster for local businesses such as the one behind me in the irrigation industry as we've addressed in previous reports go to firegondek.com sign the petition calling for her resignation which i will personally deliver for rebel news i'm sydney fizard don't forget, go to firegondek.com, sign that petition, make sure your voice is heard in this disaster the city developed for itself before other cities take notice with their negligent, politically derived mayors. Make sure that they know that what they're doing when they distract themselves with things that don't matter in place of the infrastructure that sustains the businesses we all rely on, go to firegondek.com, sign the petition.